What's going on everybody and welcome back to Cedar Flags where we're back here at Gravity Mod and this time we're going to be doing a little bit of decorating and theme work around the actual track itself. So last episode we went ahead and made the station. This time we're going to be working around the track. You can tell there's a lot of uh, open space that's under this coaster so we've got to fill a lot of that up. And while building this coaster, we also had a lot of uh, auto tunnel working, so we have to go around with the terrain tool and kind of fix a little bit of that too. So what we're doing straight off the bat here is actually going to be tweaking the track a little bit. This corkscrew is kind of in an awkward space. Uh, I wanted originally when I kind of set out to, to decorate this area, I wanted to have a, a really like cornerstone pillar kind of thing, like a, a signature uh, scenery element for this ride, I guess. And that is a giant pillar uh, that you see me place uh, with a hole in it for the cars to go through. Now, originally, I had wanted that to go over or enclose both the zero gravity roll and that corkscrew. Now, the weird part was that the corkscrew, in order for this to work, it had to be perfectly perpendicular to each other, and it wasn't. That corkscrew was really, really awkward. So, uh, after numerous tries of getting that corkscrew to a point where it would work for this kind of concept, I end up just scrapping it all together and then we have to go through and kind of finish the ride again. And I think at the end the ratings for the ride actually go down a little bit based on like the in-game rating system. But we established last episode that, uh, screw it, we don't really care. Uh, we're just gonna make rides that are like good rides in the eye of, I guess, us and specifically me because I am building it. But um, no, yeah, we have to go through and just, you're seeing me work the little uh, pillar right now and just getting the levels right. And luckily with the big patch that we had last, we are able to actually put scenery through rides and rides through scenery. And this is really key to this. Without this, it would be very, very annoying to try to build this. But since we were able to put this pillar in place and then freeze the game like I'm doing right now, and then working around it, it makes it so much easier. And we can use the fine adjust tools to just kind of frame by frame go through the animation and make sure the car clears this at all points. So it was kind of weird to get uh, correct, but in the end, it, it was really actually pretty simple. It was just kind of a, a little bit tedious, but yeah, we are uh, going through and just building that opening. Now, the opening at the top looks great. Um, the, the opening on the side, when I start to open that up to try to get that corkscrew to work, it's just very, very awkward. Um, mostly because of the way, I guess, the, the track was oriented, but also the fact that now we have two openings to this uh, structure, and they're kind of not on the same plane. They're uh, like, there wasn't visually or structurally enough support. Like, if we're gonna, I guess, break down the engineering behind this structure, I mean, it's not like it's a very heavy or like load bearing structure, but uh, yeah, just having the, the two openings kind of the way they are right now, and we're trying to work this into the coaster. But yeah, the way this was, it just wasn't cutting it. I just, I really didn't like it. I thought it was going to be really cool, and I guess to get it to work, I would have had to make this structure a lot, I guess, wider or or thinner, or, or not thinner, but like fatter at the base, and it just wasn't part of, I guess, my vision for this, but uh, what we're doing is just trying to get this corkscrew to work. I, I really tried, guys. I tried so hard to get this corkscrew to go through this and look good, and it just ended up not working out. The corkscrew was like en elongated. It wasn't the way the corkscrew should be. It was too small, too short, too, like, stretched and skewed, and it just wasn't having it. I tried, like, three or four different times just, like, from scratch to try to get it to work, and I even got to the point, as you're seeing, where I actually got, like, to a point where I was like, I, I guess this could work, let's see if we can work it. And it just didn't work. The way the coaster goes through it, to have enough space to clear, like, for the riders, it just was not having, having it. So. Uh, ultimately, we had to scrap that, and um, yeah, it was just, it was kind of weird. And ultimately, we go ahead and shrink it down by, I think, uh, yeah, just two full square grid spaces, I guess, is a good unit of measurement for this game. But yeah, that was the theory, was now to make that a little bit thinner, and then wrap this ride around the back side. So, I don't know if any of you have been to Cedar Point, but I, I live 
around Cedar Point, near it enough to visit it at least once a summer. And um, their gatekeeper ride is that winged coaster. And when they first announced the winged coaster, they were like, it goes through these two massive like structures, kind of like what we're building. That's kind of where the inspiration came from for this. But it went through these two structures, and it was kind of like the selling point. And the first time I rode it, I was like, Okay, the we went through the one, it was okay. We went through the other one, I was like, okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be, like, kind of freaky, getting real close to a structure like that. But what they didn't tell you is, after you go through the main keyhole, the ride kind of wraps around, like what we're doing right now, and then you kind of go really close to it on the back side. It, it kind of, it, it definitely freaked me out. I thought I was going to get scared going through the keyholes, but uh, no, it was on the back side when you weren't expecting it, so... That's kind of what, I guess, not, I didn't really intend for that to be the same kind of thing here, but it kind of ends up being that way. So, yeah, you're you're seeing the ride now wraps around the back, and eventually we go ahead and iron out that base of that structure a little bit. We're, we're, we're demolishing that wall right now, but, uh, yeah, it was just uh, kind of weird. And I, I think I went through a couple iterations of the finishing of the track as well. I tried to do some sort of, like, overbank curve again, and in the end, I was like... We just gotta keep this ride a little bit more simple, I think. I think we, I may have over, I, I guess, tried to, I don't know, over complicate the ride a little bit is, I guess, the way to put that. But in the end, just having, I think, one less inversion makes the ride so much better in just like a broad sense of, of the ride. But uh, yeah, we're just kind of going through and finishing up this uh, little structure here. I guess we could call it a keyhole structure. It's, I don't know, it's just a pillar with a hole in it and uh, the ride goes through it. Now, I, I kind of did mention that you want to have, if you ever build one of these in your own game, you want the ride to kind of go uh, straight through it. You don't want the pillar to be on a, a funky angle at all. You want it to be able to go through because I guess just by the way, I guess physics works or whatever, that's the least amount of time the car is going to have to go through it as if it goes through straight through. And so that's the least amount of, I guess, effort you're going to need to put in to make this thing work. So you, you don't have to, like, really sit there and tweak it too much. You just need the, the coaster to go through simply. And really, if you keep it way simple and way structured, and don't make it so big, like, this being so small now and so thin makes it so much easier. But anyway, what we are doing right now is just finishing up the top of this and then we're going to go ahead and get into the terraforming a little bit here. So, yeah, I, I don't know what I was... I don't think I really had a plan when it came to terraforming here. Now, I definitely wanted to mind the supports a little bit. I wanted to get... I guess you're seeing some of these funky supports where they're two separate pieces of the track and then they kind of sit next to each other. So I wanted the land to kind of make it so that the supports didn't look super strange. And it took a little bit of doing, but in the end, it really wasn't all that bad. But there were parts in the track where there, I just, like, took a step back, and I looked, and I was like, there's too much going on here. So, ultimately, there are a couple pieces of the track. Uh, I think mainly in the lift hill, we end up actually taking the supports off and just kind of limiting that down a little bit. Just because there's not, like... There's a finite, I guess, amount of land under the coaster. So to make it look less, like, chaotic and, like, congested down there, uh, I just wanted to kind of limit the tracks a little bit. But, yeah, we're just going through, and we're roughing out now just past the zero-G zero roll. Um, this little, like, dip in the land, originally, I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was just kind of a cool little rocky place where the, the coaster kind of goes down low almost below, I guess, ground level. I don't know if sea level is the right word for what I'm trying to say, but like the, the baseline of the terrain in the park. Uh, but yeah, eventually I was like, wait, what if we what if we make a lake here? And toward the end of the time lapse here, you're going to see us fill this up with water. And honestly, it was the first time I've used water in this game, and it, it looks great. It looks so good. And there's so much we can do with it, and we're going to continue to do that a little bit uh, as we kind of work more out past, uh, farther away from the entrance of the park, I guess. We're going to probably incorporate another lake, and it's going to be pretty, pretty cool, uh, I guess. But uh, we're just still flattening out the, the terrain here. This time lapse is full of just 
Uh, it's not minute. It's just a lot of, uh, just, I guess, yeah, almost minute detail work. It's just a lot of doing simple stuff, but it just, it was time consuming is what it was. Uh, eventually we're going to get into actually going through and putting foliage down, and I cut a lot of that out because it was pretty much the same thing, but I just, I, I kept a lot of it in just to show you guys what I was trying to do with it, but yeah, just the t terrain, uh, construction around here, really, it was just kind of a, a thorn in my side. We had to do it, but, uh, it was, it's just the, <laughs> the goal was to get the supports to not look so crowded down there and actually we're, we're taking some of the supports away right now as as we speak but um yeah just to get a little bit more land reclaimed down there so yeah just getting these supports done at the exit of the ride i wanted to go ahead and put another first aid station now i don't think i want to do that for every ride but there are a couple coasters or probably the main coasters i'd like to have first aid around it so i figured having something out the back was probably a good idea but before we get into actually detailing and constructing that area we're just going through and kind of roughing out some trees uh i wanted this to kind of be like a treed area but i didn't want the tree cover to be like super thick to where you couldn't see a lot of what was going on in the ride if you were standing on the paths. So from a distance, you can still see a lot of the ride, but up close, there are just a couple like, I guess, areas of trees that are just kind of uh, peppered in there to give some spice to the area. And it, it really takes up a lot of the area like within the coaster where we weren't gonna do much anyway. I mean, there wasn't really anything we were gonna do. We weren't gonna go ahead and put like shops in under the tracks. That'd be kind of ridiculous. But just keeping this kind of as like a nature area really turns out well. I love how much the, or how well this area comes out. I can't say it enough. I'm going to actually probably get like a, a little bit of a photo album on in Imgur or something going. And uh, I'll probably post that on my Twitter. So if you're looking to actually look at those, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. The link is down below as always. But uh, what we're doing right now is going ahead and putting another one of these pillars up into this uh kind of out of the first hill it's a really interesting like almost wide pretzel knot kind of uh i guess element on this coaster but uh the one thing about it is that it's because of the way it was constructed a couple of the supports actually got taken out of that one uh little exit of the element that goes into the rest of the track so we needed something there so i went ahead and put another one it's the same uh little structure that we had just built on the over the zero g roll and this one we actually had to connect up to the track because of the way that the track sloped downward so just putting an art block in there to visually make it look like it's actually supporting the ride um but yeah this this area didn't have a support by default i couldn't like force a support on for whatever reason i don't think you can do that yet in this game that might be a thing that they add eventually maybe who knows but, uh, yeah, we just needed something to visually make it look like the track wasn't just doing nothing. Like, it wasn't just suspended in midair with, like, no support. So that's the reason behind this one. And honestly, it was the reason behind the first, uh, over by the zero-G roll. Because originally, there wasn't actually a support for that piece of track. So I wanted something to give it that visual support. And, uh, eventually we go ahead and get that done. And then we just, <laughs> we get back to terraforming. That's... A lot of the time spent, at least early on in this whole build, was just terraforming. And we're using the texture tool right now to make this whole area kind of rocky. But, like, originally I wanted this to be more rock-oriented around here, and I wasn't really planning on doing too much with foliage under the coaster. But it just it looks a lot better with the foliage going on, and just having some nature kind of grow and it's going to look really cool in the POV when we go ahead and actually see the trees whiz past. That's one of the things, like, if you're in a theme park and you're on a ride, you don't really notice the trees, like, around the theme park because you're not really designed to look at the trees. Your eye is... They, the people who design the park want your eye to go to, like, the rides and the concessions and all the lights and all that stuff. So when you're on a coaster, you, like, you aren't focusing on that. You're kind of watching the track. But you're also watching, like, out of your peripheral vision, all of the trees that are going through. And it's just kind of really cool to see, like, the, the, the car go past a tree and all the leaves on it shake. But um, we're just going through, doing some more of the terrain work, and then some more of the foliage work. 
And this area uh, past the first drop was kind of strange. It's at the edge of the park, so doing a little bit more with the trees over here was something that I was okay with doing. But then when I took a step back and I kind of looked, it was blocking from that main ang like that main path we just did right there. It it blocked a lot of the ride. So I did want the guests, like I was just talking about, I want the guests to be drawn to the ride. So I didn't want to just obstruct the view all that much. So yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons you see me kind of tweak the trees even though I just placed them down. But uh, we're going back to the front of the station. We actually deleted the planter that was part of the building across the path. And we're going ahead and kind of designing a new little area. Now, I had a comment actually in the last episode that said the gray rocks, that they kind of blend into the base of that entrance. So I completely agreed with that comment. It was a great comment from whoever said it. And it's it's the reason we're now just kind of adding some uh, a little bit of ground cover. You guys know how much I love this ground cover in this game, and I honestly wish there was more variety of just low ground cover. But uh, putting these down just visually separates the pathwork and that grayness from the base of that building. So having this as kind of like a live, I guess, feature instead of just that dead rock kind of look. It just gives us, I guess, a little bit more life. I mean, I, there's not really any other way to put it, but uh, we're gonna, you're actually gonna see me do a lot with this ground cover coming up in the rest of this time lapse, which is a fairly lengthy one if you haven't noticed by the uh, the time on this video. Uh, I, I originally, I think I cut this video off like after this little cut in the time lapse, but I didn't really want to spend. I wanted to spend more time on this. I didn't want to give you guys an episode where we kind of halfway did the scenery behind the track and then we'd come back and do a full another episode on this. I didn't want that to happen, so I figured just put an episode out a little bit later and get most of the work done. And to be honest, we do all of the work decorating underneath the track in this episode. But there's a couple uh, there's a couple areas that I intentionally didn't go ahead and finish in terms of designing, and we'll point that out in the live portion of this video, and that's for good reason, and that's because we're gonna be going and uh, doing some more work around it, and I wanted to kind of incorporate those areas together. So if I just went through and I uh, detailed around all of the areas here, I feel like some people when they do that I don't know there's no like specific example in my mind right now but like you can I think you can get into like a very dangerous like trap of of designing and like out designing yourself in one area and then you go to expand the park and it looks like you've just kind of put a bunch of puzzle pieces together you didn't like flow it together if that makes any sense but uh, yeah that's kind of why you, I guess a good theory would be to not finish everything in like a certain area and then next time you go to build kind of incorporate and blend them together so that's what we're doing in this episode and toward the uh, the end of this here so uh, I'll definitely show you guys that in the live portion but what we're doing on the screen right now is kind of another one of these custom kind of lamps now you may notice that the lamp that we put down the actual like light emitting lamp is a scenery piece a path extra I think uh, maybe not but it's just a scenery piece, and that was in the latest uh, patch. We got these really cool benches that we're also putting down. These kind of like wired uh, metal benches, and I felt like it it really fit the area over here just because of the way Gravity Mod is is kind of designed. It's it's not that rustic kind of feel that Alpine Spirit was. We have this room to kind of bring modern materials in, and so that's the reason we have these. Uh, brand new lamps. I also wanted to get them kind of thrown in because I feel like they're new, they're exciting. Why not incorporate them? So that's what we did. We also put that the uh, custom base on those lamps and that was because I really wanted to incorporate a couple more colors and kind of make them more of like a feature rather than just like a, an extra that's thrown into the, uh, the bushes. But anyway, we're actually going through and kind of designing these like flower bed kind of things here. Uh, we're taking the same bushes that we've kind of lined throughout the entire part of the park so far, and we're incorporating those over here. And what we're doing is just kind of trapping that ground cover in and all these bushes in. 
to kind of make like a, a, I guess a visual uh, container is a good word. And that's really what we were going for. I, I wanted, I don't know, this path was kind of weird. It was right on this ravine that goes down below the coaster. So I wanted that to kind of be separated visually, but also like a real park would want people to not walk around there. They definitely have some sort of fences up. And instead of doing just straight up fences under our coaster, I wanted to kind of make nature be the fence here. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these rocks go in. A lot of these bushes are just kind of blocking guests from, I guess, wandering down under the coaster to find their like lost uh, cell phone that they dropped on the ride. Uh, there's been so many stories of people trying to do that and then getting hit by the coaster and it, it never ends well for them, but they still do it anyway. I don't really know why, but yeah, we're not going to have that in Cedar Flags. Not like the AI would actually have a guest wander. That'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? But uh, anyway, we're just... I, I wanted to kind of create that area or that that definition and in doing that I kind of remembered that the rocks were a thing and so they they a made a really good like natural barrier for for the guests and B they end up being a really really cool thing to decorate the sides of all of these canyons here so just adding a little bit of flair to it and you can actually add a lot of flair just using the terrain painter now they have the rock texture that we used for pretty much like the base coat of paint around this area but then they have the other rock texture that ends up giving a little bit of like definition to the area like you're seeing on the sides of these mountains here they they have like streaks and cracks in them and you can actually use that and couple that with the actual like scenery like the rock scenery and make a really, really convincing, like, cliffside. So that's what I've just been doing, like, up in this time lapse right now. Up in this little area, we have just these pockets that I tried to accomplish. Little pockets of that ground cover, just to kind of keep it alive, you know? And I could have just kept the grass there, but I felt like having the ground cover there made it feel a lot more like it was kind of unkept a little bit. Like, there's... There's life there, but it's just growing like organically and naturally. But uh, you saw me go ahead and put the, the water down and this it just makes it so, so nice around there. And if you're thinking this would be a really good spot for a fountain, you're right. And we're gonna go ahead and do that a little bit later in the time lapse. Like I said, it's a fairly lengthy time lapse here. We're getting a lot done. Uh, actually, right now we're going back to do that first aid station that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, just kind of adding it on to make it look like it was part of this main station. Now it's kind of hidden, it's down underneath the track, which I'm not sure if uh, like a real theme park would want that many people down under the track, but uh, it's, it's just kind of tucked away back there and I'm feeling like guests probably won't just wander down there, although I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, we're just kind of adding it, making it look like it's popping out of the side of this and adding some art pieces, the same ones that are on the roof of the station, just kind of pulling all the elements together. And we went ahead and covered it with the, the metal alloy walls. And yeah, there's really not much else to say. We uh, just eventually set this up, make it look like it's popping out of the side. And then we go ahead and uh, make a path around it. So. This is, it's kind of weird. Like I wanted this to be kind of like secluded, like a little area that no one would ever really want to go down by. But uh, in the end, it actually turns out to be a really awesome area, this path that we're doing right now. It's, it's really cool because what we do with the terrain in a few moments here is we end up actually making the terrain uh, like shear off and then there's the water goes right up next to the path. So it, it's like off a little bit of a cliff, but you'll see, you'll see, it's pretty cool. I really love how this area came out. I don't know, like, it really shouldn't be that cool of an area. It's just, like, the underside of a coaster. But I just love how the nature of it just kind of, and the landscaping all just kind of goes together. So, yeah, just any of these little areas that had a very weird dip in terrain, uh, especially from the main path on those stairs down to the other path that we needed to put in to get guests under the initial uh, part of the track there, this I just lined with rocks because it, it's just a really good natural way to kind of hide blemishes, I guess, in the elevation changes in the terrain. Now, uh, the terrain tools in this game are actually really good. They are like by far some of the best terrain manipulation tools that I've ever seen in a game. 
but uh, occasionally, like, you can't t edit the terrain near a path, unfortunately. So it's, it's pretty hard to get things to work right. But luckily, you can clip the rocks down through and it just, it ends up looking so good if you do it the right way. So uh, you see, we're just kind of adding a little bit of space for water here. And there's a really cool little archway that we do in the terrain where water flows under it. It's kind of like a little cave system. We actually did one over by the Alpine Spirit ride originally. So I just, I guess I'm drawing influence from over there, but uh, yeah, this place ends up turning into a really, really awesome, like scenic lookout point but yeah, we'll we'll eventually put some benches down here and that will probably be a really good area for people to just kind of come down and like rest and sit and watch the coaster go by. But uh, yeah, we're just going through just still terrain tweaks, just trying to get everything incorporated nicely together. I think once I got like a little bit of a design element in my mind, it was a lot easier to go through and kind of tweak the terrain on the fly. Now, it was kind of... Like, at first, I was just kind of, uh, I guess, spitballing and just trying to get terrain kind of roughed out. But after a while, it starts to take form and you start to get ideas as you kind of go through a creative process, I guess. And just to, to kind of take the terrain tool and create these, like, little unique little steps in the terrain and just flatten out little areas that you then go back and, and put ground cover down or, or some sort of nature in there. It's just such a nice way to do things here and it, it makes it so much visually more interesting than just having like smooth hills with the terrain just cramming these little details down here and they're they're details that like no one's ever gonna really notice unless you stop to look around you know like when you're i guess if you ever open like a, a theme park save uh in this game you, you don't like i guess when you first look you don't look at every little detail you just kind of take it in as just a broad, I guess, painting. And then you go in and you look and it's just like, wow, this person put this in here, this person put that in there. So yeah, that's this this little area. You saw us go ahead and put the fountain in there. The fountain, like, it's not very visual from any part of the park except that one little walkway down there at the exit and near that uh, first aid. So yeah, we're just going through, figuring out the rest of this terrain and the rest of this ground cover just making this place look a little bit alive. Now, we end up putting a couple of these bigger bushes in just to kind of change it up a little bit. This area in particular had a lot of the same stuff going on. So uh, just kind of changing that up with a, a different bush was just a really, really interesting or, or a good way to keep interest in the area without kind of overkilling the same designs that we have been doing. And uh, yeah, just I think one of the last things we're doing here is going through and just uh, filling out some more space. Like I said, there's a lot of minutia going on here. A lot of time consuming work, but it's one of those things that we had to do to just keep this area up to the same standard that we have been for the rest of the park. So guys, that just about does it. So let's go ahead, go live, and check and see what we've just been doing in this really long time lapse. All right, guys, so we are back live in Cedar Flags, and we're right next to Gravity Mod, and where better to start than the entrance of the ride? Now, before we go into anything that we were just doing, I want to talk about something real quick that I did off camera. Uh, it really wasn't entertaining to watch, and that is add a priority queue to this ride. Now, we didn't do that in the original design, so we kind of just shoehorned it in here. Now, it's kind of strange... Well, it, it worked in a way because uh, we had the the path or the queue here already and there was enough space to kind of just put the priority queue here and then wrap it around and uh, back up and meet up here. Now, it's a little awkward for her, whatever her name is. Uh, she's kind of leaning on a bar, hitting her head on it, whatever. Not really my problem. Uh, I, I guess kind of my problem as the park owner or whatever, but I just find it weird that they stand outside of the queue or the railings on this, but I don't know. I didn't design it. I just put it in there. So uh, that's that. But yeah, let's go ahead and check out the station and all of the terrain around it. Now, just from a distance, I know I talked about it a little bit, just like stepping back and looking at the broad strokes of things. And yeah, it's just such a nice area now. From a distance, it looks like it's done. It's, it's landscaped and there's a lot going on and of course when you get up close to it, there is just a lot going on. So taking it in 
step by step is the key to doing, I guess, anything around it. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but yeah, we'll just start here on the path. Uh, you'll notice the white benches that we had. Now, I could have made these benches, I guess, gray or black. It just didn't look as good. It didn't look like it was appealing to have... I don't know. If you're walking down, I think it's more appealing to sit in a white bench because you know it's going to be clean than a gray bench that's probably got some weird stuff going on. Uh, I don't know. You, you've seen park benches, right? It's it, Things could get a little iffy, but... Uh, yeah, just moving down this little path here, we have that nature um, divide, or the little, I guess, wall of nature that kind of contains the path. Now, guests aren't going to kind of jump off of the path, and I think at a theme park, you're not really going to try to work your way off a path just, like, intentionally, unless you're... I don't know why you would. I, I think you just stay on the path, but... You know, in a, th in a real theme park, they are definitely just theming up to the path. That's They want to keep people on the path. They want a bunch of railings and stuff around that. So that's kind of the, the whole theory behind this area. We, we did talk about that already. But yeah, I think it, it just, like, stepping back, it looks like a place that's not just, like, void. It's, it's definitely, there's a defined ridge here now. And if you get close to it, or even if you get over here, you can kind of see the ridge, and it, it just looks great. Now, uh, I talked a little bit about not finishing certain parts around this ride, and basically those parts are over here. You'll notice this bridge has no railings on it, and that's because we have to build those. And I didn't want to do that right after, or during this time lapse in this episode, because I didn't want to switch gears that hard to do it. Now, it's probably going to be like a rustic style bridge and just going through and doing all the theming around it um it it wouldn't look good in this time lapse it's just it it would feel out of place i guess is what i'm trying to say but when we go ahead and expand out here and start to like build this plaza out here whatever we do in here it's gonna be i guess more tied into that bridge so at that point we'll go ahead and finish up that bridge and this area right here there's nothing here we'll probably end up taking an actual railing around here uh, not just like a, a bunch of rocks like we have been doing in the other spaces but uh, I guess speaking of rocks since we're over here just like looking at this alone right here it's so good like it's so awesome I love how this came out a lot of these are actually ploppable rocks like if I click on some of these here uh, yeah obviously they're they're rocks but like some of this over here like I'm clicking right now and it's it's not a rock but it looks like a rock like it looks like it was meant to, or it was there intentionally. And that's just using the terrain and manipulating it a little bit and just adding that texture and that uh, that other rock texture. And I, I guess speaking of the rock or the other textures, you'll notice some of the grass is still growing around here. I didn't go overboard with the uh, the ground cover, but you'll notice that this, this grass texture, there are two of them. Like if I go in here... You'll notice there's this auto paint, which is like the normal grass in the park, and then there's this kind of like more rugged grass. Like no one's over here to to take care of it. No one's lawn mowing over here. So that's kind of the the theory of that, and that's why I kind of put that grass texture around some of these areas that we ended up not touching with the actual ground covers. So. Yeah, I guess uh, just moving around here, we're obviously going to fill out the rest of this area in here. And uh, as we do that, we'll be able to kind of, I guess, design a little bit more or put more nature around it or do whatever we are going to do around here. Right now, it just kind of looks like we, we just abruptly stopped with the trees, and that's because we, we did. So, yeah, as we kind of grow out and around here, we'll actually go ahead and be able to finish that up a little bit more. And that gets back into that blending that I was talking about before. But, uh, yeah, let's... I guess, I guess one of the final things to do is come over here where this janitor is I, not doing his job. He's just walking around flipping a broom around. But this is one of the, the key elements of this area. And we actually still have to put path or uh, benches in here. And we'll do that in a sec, I guess. But, yeah, this is great. This little area down here. Now, it's one of those things that, like, if you're on the actual main path, just like walking from the entrance up here. I don't know if you'd stop and actually jump down these stairs. Like, it's not like a place that is really has any purpose. And if we had a sign that said, like, do not enter, like they used to in uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon 
I would put that here. But uh, this is just one of those places that if you get off this ride and you're you're walking down this path or yeah, down these stairs here and you, you could just like before you get back up, you could be like, Oh wait, what's over here? And then you like walk over here and there's just this awesome view. This is so nice around here. I love this so much. Like there's just the nature to take in and then the fountain of course is right there. And of course the coaster, like you can see all of the coaster from here and it looks so good. So good. Like just watching this coaster right now is just sheer amazement from me. Oh my. It's so amazing. But uh, yeah, I guess that's about that. Let's go ahead I normally don't do a lot of this on camera uh, building, but right now we do have to go ahead and put some of these benches down. And I'm thinking of maybe putting these. I know it doesn't kind of fit the style of what we've done around uh, the front of the ride, but I feel like this just works so well back here. It's such a nice spot to just sit and take it all in, and that is what those benches kind of scream at me. It looks a little bit more comfortable than Park Bench 2, which is just this this metal thing here. So, yeah, I guess uh, that's that. I mean, like, nothing else to talk about. Let's go ahead and close this episode up. But before we do that, let's talk about what we're going to do next. And really, I haven't thought about this all that much. I know we do have to put in some uh, uh, security cameras because we keep getting these reports of theft in the park and I actually did go ahead and hire a couple of the security guards just to kind of keep those messages down but yeah we'll have to do that I'm not sure if I'm gonna record that because it's just kind of placing cameras around nothing all that exciting but you know we might end up going through here and doing this plaza next or whatever we're gonna do here I really honestly have no idea we might just put another ride in a simple ride um, it might just be a simple little episode and then past that, we'll go ahead and expand this and probably, I was thinking about maybe putting some go-karts over here and then doing some cool stuff with like a bridge or something around here. So guys, I guess that's about it for this episode. Now there's not much else to do, but you know what? Let's go ahead and flip this to open. Let's see if anybody starts to come over here. Yes, the grand opening is finally upon us here. So. Yeah, uh, I guess, guys, if you liked this episode, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give me a thumbs down. And as always, you guys can go ahead and grab this save off of the Steam Workshop, and the link for that will be in the description below. So guys, until next time, I'll see you back here in Cedar Flags.